Time now to get an update on the day's business news. And we're starting with the World Cup in Qatar. It is shaping up to be the most expensive in its history. And Yuka Roye is here to give us the numbers. Well, Alison, by some estimates, the cost of the Qatar Games is higher than all of the past World Cup tournaments put together. Now, the U.S. consultancy Front Office Sports put the total cost at $220 billion, dwarfing the previous record in Brazil, which cost an estimated $15 billion. It's impossible, though, to calculate exactly how much the event itself is costing the tiny Gulf state, as the bulk of it comes from updating the country's infrastructure. Now, Qatar has spent more than $200 billion since it was chosen as the host back in 2010, building roads and updating airports. But all that is part of a domestic mega public investment project called Qatar National Vision 2030, meaning it's not just for the World Cup. However, it's hard to give the same justification for the eight stadiums used for the tournament, all but one of which have been built from scratch. Some 100 hotels and service department towers have also been built in the past 12 years. So will all this pay off? Well, not in the short run, even though the, estimated, uh, the event is estimated to bring more than 1 million tourists into the country of 3 million. Qatar expects the World Cup to add around $17 billion to its economy, lower than its previous estimate of $20 billion. In another business news, the Walt Disney Company has announced its former longtime chief executive, uh, Bob Iger, will return as CEO less than a year after he retired. He will replace uh, Bob Chapek, who took over the media company in February of 2020. During his 15-year tenure, Iger pushed Disney to expand globally through a series of acquisitions, including Pixar and Marvel. While his successor, Chapek, steered the company through the coronavirus pandemic, the company has been struggling to make its streaming business profitable. The surprise reshuffle announcement comes just months after Disney's board unanimously voted to extend Chapek's contract for three more years. Let's have a quick check on the markets now. Asian stocks mostly slipped at the start of the trading week amid renewed COVID restrictions and rising cases in China. Hong Kong dipping almost 2% on Monday, while Tokyo managed to eke out gains. Uh, on Monday, Beijing's most uh, populous district urged residents to stay at home, while at least one district in Guangzhou uh, was locked down for five days. Here you are. We have the figures now. Uh, the Tokyo is on the only uh, main index that's in a positive territory now. Uh, worries over China's coronavirus situation weighed on the global oil market too. International benchmarks slid further to the lowest level in two years or near to that level uh, due to expectations that demand from the global manufacturing engine may decrease. Here in France, doctors are being urged not to over-prescribe amoxicillin, one of the most commonly used antibiotics, amid a global shortage of the medicine. Manufacturers had cut back production when demand dipped during the pandemic as lockdowns slowed the spread of bacterial infections. But now, as many countries get back to normal, pharmaceuticals are scrambling to boost supplies. Camille Nedelec has the story. An increased demand for a common antibiotic has triggered shortages. This pharmacy in France is one of many that has no more amoxicillin left to give to patients. We do get some stock in, but it's unpredictable and not very much. We're usually sold out. The drug is often used to treat ear infections and strep throat in children. It's a problem, especially as lots of children need it right now. During the pandemic, social distancing meant fewer bacterial infections. Europeans consumed 15 per cent less antibiotics in 2020 than in 2019, and so manufacturers slashed output. But with restrictions lifted, infections are rising. Despite that, drug makers still aren't at pre-pandemic production levels. The French health agency has said it is looking to import the medicine, but the shortage comes amid a wider supply crunch in the US, Ireland, Australia and Canada. It means not over-prescribing amoxicillin is more important than ever. Yep. There's a real issue with French doctors being far too quick to prescribe amoxicillin. Sandoz, a division of Novartis, announced plans last year to invest 100 million euros in amoxicillin production in Europe. But for now, a lack of foil and boxes has left the firm struggling to keep up. 
The French health agency has warned supplies of the drug are not expected to return to normal until March 2023. That was Camille Nederlech with that story, Alison. And it, it is true that amoxicillin is very commonly prescribed, uh, especially here in France, you know, whenever you get your uh, infections anywhere, uh, in your intestines or otherwise. And the common mistake, of course, is uh, patients tend to think that viral infections can be treated uh, with antibiotics as well, which is not the case. Yeah, it seems crazy that they didn't plan for that that boost uh, in, in need for amoxicillin. Yuko, Yuko Roy, thank you, as always, for the business update.